So, good afternoon and all. I thank uh, Puduvai Pedicon organizing team and IAPTNSE for giving this opportunity to talk about rational pediatric prescription. Basically, it was defined long back by our Thiruvalluvar in the form of uh, Thirukural, that is Noi Nadi, Noi Mudal Nadi, Adudanikkum Vai Nadi, Vai Pachayar. This is a perfect definition for a rational pediatric prescription. Before going to the topic proper, we need to know certain things about the prescription, that is parts of the prescription. First is date, it is important. Next part will be superscription, which contains the details about the prescriber as well as the patient. Next important part will be inscription. This is the major part, which consists of the details about the drugs, dosage, frequency, etc. Subscription is the part which is addressing the pharmacist regarding the dispensing of the drug. Transcription is also an important part which is dealing about the administration, drug administration advice to the parents. Of course, the signature of the prescriber is mandatory in all prescription. And the major instruction for the particular disease should be there in the footnote of the prescription. What are the types of prescription we know? Simple prescription, complex prescription, E electronic prescription, inpatient prescription, and narcotic prescription. But topic for today will be rational prescription, which will maximize the clinical effectiveness will minimize the arms to the patient and it will avoid wasting the health healthcare resources and it will respect the patient choice that is parent choice who has come up with six steps of uh, good prescription step one will be define the patient's problem step two will be specify the therapeutic objective step three a will be choose your standard treatment protocol and step 3b will be verifying the suitability of your treatment to the patient. Step 4, starting the treatment. Step 5, give information, instruction and warning signs to the parents. Step 6 is an important step that is monitoring of the treatment and you have to stop the treatment if there are any potential adverse effects. How are you going to choose the drug? Mainly four criteria we are going to take. Efficacy, safety, indication and the cost of the drug. When there are more similar drugs, that should be preference to pharmaceutical agents which have been thoroughly investigated, which have the most favorable pharmacokinetic properties, which are produced by reliable industrial facilities like evidence-based medicine and the drugs should be included in the P medication list. What is P medication list? PE medication list is nothing but this uh, model list of essential medicine for children was derived by World Health Organization and totally so far seven lists have been produced. The latest update was done at the 2019. From this list, all this medicine should be used for the children. That is called rational prescription. What about Indian level uh, list is available? Indian Academy of Pediatrics has updated it's not updated, it's adopted from WHO list, but it still need to be updated because the first list was produced at the year 2011. So while prescribing, we have to take in care of the drug factors like pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics, and the evidence-based drugs. And we have to think about cost effectiveness of the drug. And we have to think about patient factors, that is child factors and parents factors, namely agent sex of the patient, in interacting diseases of the patient, interactive drugs that is the patient is getting, the genetics profile of the patient. In important uh, for children will be the taste of the drug, whether it is palatable, uh, palatable all this uh, consideration to be taken care. There are few assessment tools are available to assess the rationality of the prescription, namely POPI, modified POPI, PIP. What is POPI? Pediatrics, omissions of prescription and inappropriate prescriptions. It contains one or five criteria, quite complex one. 
so we cannot use this pop criteria in our setup then subsequently it is modified by uk treatment guidelines then what is the ideal tool we can use that is pip indicators of potentially inappropriate prescribing in children this tool will be useful to assess in primary care settings like our indian country it consists only 12 criteria and it is simpler to apply and that requires minimal class clinical information about the patient so we are going to see something about pip it is the area of interest for the research for postgraduate students and uh, it consists of 12 uh, indicators one indicator i just want to read out intranasal beclomethasone should not be prescribed to children under 6 years like that there are 12 indicators available in the pip list pip tool using this pip tool many countries have come with a concept called kid kid what is kid key potentially inappropriate drugs in children this list consists of many drugs i just want to take the first page of the list in which that codeine has been mentioned codeine which will cause respiratory depression and death in children so we have to avoid in children unless the pharmacogenetic testing is done the pharmacogenetic testing is not possible in our country so better we should avoid codeine the same way it is mentioned that the fourth line that is ketrioxone which will produce risk of kernicterus in newborn baby but what is the strength of the recommendation it is weak what is the level of quality of the evidence it is very low even though the strength of the recommendation is weak and the level of the quality of the evidence is low we still cautious about using ketrioxone in neonates to avoid kernicterus so it is not depend upon the strength of the evidence uh, and the quality of the evidence it is regarding the rationality in choosing the drug to avoid adverse events to the patient so there are a lot of medication errors is occurring in pediatric prescription in the form of prescription error in the form of uh, dispensing error in the form of administration error but what is the important error we must know through this uh, session is prescription error prescription error is a failure in the prescription writing process that result in a wrong instruction about one or more of the normal features of the prescription for example there may be error occurring in the identity of the recipient identity of the drug formulation dose route timing frequency and duration of the administration so in a study conducted at nag nagpur city shown that when the prescription is written by a non pediatric practitioners the prescription error is increasing when it is written by a non medical person it is two fold increasing so we should take in care of all these errors so how can prescribing go wrong inadequate knowledge about the drug indication and contraindication not considering individual patient factors such as allergies to the drug existing comorbidities like renal insufficiency liver insufficiency and uh, simultaneous drug administration that is uh, uh, re received by the child and wrong patient wrong dose wrong time wrong drug uh, wrong drug and wrong route an inadequate communication to the parents in the form of written and verbal communication illegible incomplete and ambiguous documentation of the prescription and mathematical error that is occurring during the calculation of the doses and if you are using computerized prescription that is not an exemption for error there can be incorrect data entry occur in the form of duplication omission and wrong number for example somebody is writing a drug called celebrex cerebrex and celexa its are the drugs example for a look alike and a sound alike a medication but the brand name is similar with a different mechanism of action so ideal prescription should contain generic name rather than the brand name that is the error can occur through the look alike and sound like medications now also we must avoid ambiguous nomenclature for example we should avoid trailing zeros we should write one not 1.0 this will create confusion we should use leading zeros for example we should write 0.1 
not 0.1 it will produce error so we should write neatly and we should print if it is necessary and there is a wonderful prescription done by some prescriber and for this prescription also that pharmacist is able to provide drugs so this is a totally a yeah, wonderful prescription so we should not get comment about our prescription like this so these are all the following situation that should be included as a prescription errors a prescribing a drug based upon the weight of the child but not writing the final calculated dose in the prescription that is error prescribing a drug to a child while the child has a known allergy to the drug prescribing a drug to a child without documenting the actual weight of the child or without adjusting for the existing weight of the child and writing a drug based upon the out of date weight not adjusting the age factor for the prescription these are the situation and prescribing a drug to a patient without adjusting for underlying comorbid conditions and the misspelling of a drug will cause lot of errors and illegible prescription will cause lot of errors and prescribing a dose regimen that is not recommended for the formulation prescribed and unintentionally not prescribing a drug for a clinical condition for which the medication is actually indicated prescribing a drug that should be given at a specific time in relation to the meal but that specific instruction is missing in that prescription prescribing a drug to given by intra intermittent intravenous infusion but the duration of the infusion is not mentioned in the prescription and prescribing a drug that is intra intermittent intravenous infusion but the diluent and the composition is not mentioned in the prescription prescribing a drug with a narrow therapeutic index writing a ambiguous medication order and omission of prescri prescriber's signature prescribing a drug without taking into account of the drug interactions prescri prescription of a drug which have potential at a dose of sub therapeutic dose or supra therapeutic dose writing a drug's name using abbreviation or non standard nomenclatures prescribing a drug for a patient who has a specific contract contraindication to the particular drug and finally prescribing to a patient a dose that is not within plus or minus 25% of the recommended dose prescribing a drug to be taken when required without specifying the maximum daily dose of the drug and not rewriting the prescription in a full change that has been made you have to rewrite the prescription if you have made any changes in the prescription so in this prescription the strength mentioned is 1 mg actually it is 2 mg because of this error automatically the dosage will become wrong so this is another irrational prescription consists of four antibiotics for a child having 24 hours of fever maybe the temperature is 103 but writing a four antibiotics for a single day fever is totally irrational that is why there are lot of studies are coming up regarding the prescription analysis somebody may analyze our prescription in future both in the outpatient setup and inpatient setup studies conducted in nagpur city as well as in pondicherry shown that there are lot of errors are encounter in the existing prescription patterns in the form of polypharmacy in the form of irrational antibiotic drug usage in the form of prescribing more injectable drugs for the pediatric population and uh, some of the prescription are violating the who model list of essential drugs and uh, some of the prescription are violating the who standard for rational prescription and the many of the prescription are written in the name of trade name not in the generic name simple common scenario i want to discuss is a third year old a three year old child weight with a normal weight working parents having run in running nose for three days occasional cough sleep reduced due to nasal stuffiness no fever what will you do what will we do Gen in general we used to advise some anti histamine but what is the evidence based medicine says there is no evidence of effectiveness of anti histamines in children then what to be written for this condition we need to spend more time with the parents we have to give humpty number of counseling with the adequate timing that is possible for uh, young practitioners but for a busy practitioner it may not be possible honey can, can be prescribed lot of evidences are available but not the antibiotics and antihistamines 
I agree it is difficult for any practitioner. Rational antibiotic use is being dealt by many experts for us, but still we are facing a lot of difficulties in using rational antibiotic in our prescription. For example, Centaur criteria. It is available to diagnose streptococcal pharyngitis. We have to apply that criteria. If the criteria is fulfilled, then only we are supposed to write the antibiotics. If you are following all the criteria, we can avoid prescribing antibiotic for a common cold. By doing this, we can avoid adverse events related to the antibiotic, as well as we can avoid the development of resistance to the antibiotic. So how are you going to do a safe medication practice? There are 10 steps. I'm going to uh, brief them fast. Use generic name rather than trade name. I again emphasize it is mentioned in the Medical Code of Ethics, which is designed by MCI, the year 2016. That is writing trade name is strictly prohibited. Generic name should be written in the prescription. If at all you are writing the treatment, generic name should be there. Tailor your prescribing for each individual patient based upon their allergy status, comorbid condition, other medication and weight of the child. Learn and practice thorough medication history taking from the child. For example, the name, dose, route, frequency, duration of the every drug that is taken by the child and inquire about the recently stopped medication by the parents and inquire about the over-the-counter medication and dietary supplements, alternative medicine that are followed by the parents. We should have the idea about drugs with narrow therapeutic index and we should know the medications that well about the prescription in the form of drug absorption. Some of the drugs should be taken in the empty stomach and some of the drugs should be mandatorily taken along with the food. The pharmacokinetics, mainly for antibiotics, some of the antibiotics will act based upon the concentration dependent manner and some of the antibiotics will act based upon the time dependent manner. Major drug interaction that is encountered in a pediatric intensive care unit is mentioned in this uh, slide. We should be aware about all this major interaction. While prescribing off-label drugs, we should be very careful in medical legal aspects. There, if there is no suitable drug is available for the benefit of the child, we can use off-label drugs with the minimal adverse effects and side effects. So how are you going to have practice rational prescription? We can use memory aids in the form of textbooks, personal digital assistance, computer programs and computerized prescribing, following standard protocols. Apart from this, we have to free up our brain from problem solving rather than the remembering facts and figures that can be stored elsewhere. And you have to looking things up if it is going in the wrong direction. It is a marker of safe practice. It is not a marker of incompetence. So again, you please looking the things going in the wrong direction and you rectify it. What are the standard uh, tools are available for rational prescription? This is IAP drug formulary available in the app. We can use all IAP members are eligible to use the app, the free of cost. IBM app is available, BNF books and textbook of Nelson is available. And every pediatrician must read this WHO drug safety manual before starting their prescription. And we must know about the certain banned drugs by CDSCO, that is Central Drug Standard Control Organization, that is the governing body of uh, drugs in our country. Remember the five R. What are the five R? Right drug, right dose, right route, right time, and right patient. And develop checking habits twice or thrice when prescribing a medication. Remember, computerized system still require checking, even though they are having a facility of blocking the errors. Never administer medication unless you are 100% sure about the drug. Practice makes permanent and practice makes perfect. So start your checking habits now and involve the patients and parents in reporting the drug adverse effects actively while you are monitoring the patient for a newer drug and report the medication error to the concerned authorities. Right now we have reporting authorities in the following websites for, from our IAP, that is iapdrugformulary.com and iapindia.org. We can get reply from the concerned specialists if you are going to report a specific significant adverse drug event. Pharmacoeconomics is the final step of a rational pediatric practice. Please avoid polytherapy 
for the view of cost reduction you have to prepare your own list of cost effective medicines you have to choose the drugs from the drug control pricing list for example a bronchodilator therapy brand x with a fixed drug combination will cost 108 rupees whereas a same drug if it is coming as a single drug in a brand y which will cost 20 rupees i cannot mention the brand name so please be rational and cost effective while prescribing these are all some interesting prescriptions the senior pediatrician dr arulalan is following this prescription which contains tamil and english language in a printing model he is describing the patient name and complaints disease condition drugs frequency dose duration it is a single uh, three pages of a single prescription how patient prescription for a patient that much involvement is shown by a uh, lot of pediatrician so i got admired by this prescription and another rational prescription by dr palni ram sir is writing it's a e prescription is is writing the diagnosis clearly it's a viral illness and he is not prescribing any antibiotics majority of his prescriptions are very rational and it is a interesting prescription by my friend dr subaya which contains emergency pediatric assessment triangle in a op prescription this is a kind of prescription following followed by my friend dr shivaguru nadan it is the prescription paper will copy your prescription without carbon paper such kind of uh, prescription papers are nowadays available at the end of the week at the end of the month you can revise your prescription you can Uh, self assess your prescription what are the wrong things we have done in our prescription and we can rectify our prescription so in my point of view all pediatricians are like quiet every day they are writing 50 to 100 poems for the sake of their audience that is audience are parents with the maintaining the rationality in the form of writing a rational prescription not only they are poets they are good judges they are writing a powerful verdict on each prescription by considering the prescription factors every day so this is my poem sorry this is my verdict very sorry this is my rational prescription of my own practice so by while prescribing rational prescription take home message appropriate diagnosis evidence based medicine should be there pharmaco economic consideration should be there and it should be error free prescription and eligible prescription and drug safety and efficacy to be maintained in all prescription and important thing will be it should be a parents and child friendly prescription my recommendation out of the this talk will be we must have a rational pediatric prescription curriculum for undergraduate and postgraduate medical education we should promote regional wise assessment of pediatric prescription using a various rational prescription tool all over the country to find out the rationality of the prescription and we need to have a updated list of essential medicine for children to provide national level guidelines by the regulatory bodies and we should create a detailed research scope for medication error that is occurring in children to ensure the safety of children of this country thank you for patient listening Thank you for your wonderful, sharp and clear, like a prescription.